Hi, today I'm going to show you the quickest and easiest way to fix spongy hydraulic brakes on your Zero 10X scooter. The Zero 10X comes fitted with zoom brakes, but this method will work equally well on any other brand. There are quite a few videos out there on this topic, and I have tried most of the methods shown. What follows is what I've found to be the easiest, simplest, quickest, and most effective way of doing this. I hope you enjoy this video. This diagram shows the problem that we're trying to fix. Hydraulic systems work because the fluid inside the closed system is incompressible. When air gets into the system, it forms bubbles, which being gas, are compressible, and the result is spongy breaks. The process of removing air from the hydraulic lines is called bleeding. There are essentially two types of bleed that can be done. The most difficult and most effective is a pressure bleed where fresh fluid is forced through the system using a pump or syringe. A much easier method, and the one that I'll demonstrate, is called a lever bleed. It only requires pumping the brake levers while letting gravity push out the unwanted air. In most cases, that's all you'll need to get great results. Whilst most hydraulic brake systems work the same way, there are two things to note about your zoom brakes. Firstly, the filler port has two holes either side of it, which means you cannot use a simple funnel or cup as a reservoir like you can on, say, a Shimano brake. I have no idea why these two holes exist, but it's important to note that there's a metal washer that covers them. It's easy to inadvertently lose this washer, and if you do, the plug that screws in there will no longer seal properly. So be careful not to pull this washer out when you remove the plug. Also, make sure the washer is in place whenever you screw a bleed fitting into this port. Regarding the plug, there is a rubber o-ring on the underside of the cap that is essential to making a pressure tight seal, so be sure you don't lose that either. Okay, I think that's enough warnings, don't you? Okay, so this is the kit that I'll be using for this uh, brake bleed. I ordered this on Amazon, uh, it cost I think $41 and it covers, it can be used with a whole lot of different manufacturers of hydraulic brake systems for bicycles and scooters. The reason I had to order this one specifically was to get the zoom component because uh, not many of these kits actually come with the right fittings for zoom brakes. So you need to make sure you get one that clearly indicates that it can be used with the zoom braking system. So inside that box, there's a whole bunch of good stuff and there's at least two of everything. So if something gets broken or damaged or lost, you've got plenty of bits there, extra bits. I'm not gonna go over everything that's in there. I've just pulled out the bits that we need for this job. So the first thing is there's not much in the way of instructions. However, this diagram here actually shows you the, the fittings you need for the zoom brake. Unfortunately, the brass fitting that they show here doesn't fit on my Zero 10X scooter, so that doesn't work, uh, but these two plastic ones do work. So you have to use a plastic one, which is you know not as good as brass, but it still works, so that's not really a problem. You've got these uh, pieces of plastic tubing for connecting to the reservoir on the um, brake system. You've got uh, two syringes, so you only need one for this job, uh, to put the mineral oil into. Uh, it does come with a Torx wrench, which you'll need to uh, remove the plug on the uh, hydraulic reservoir. Uh, and this here is an assembled thing that I've assembled with the, on the one end here, you've got the fitting that goes onto the the scooter uh, and that's one of those little black plastic fittings there. The important thing to note about this is that there are actually two o-rings on here. When you take it out of the packet it only has one o-ring and that o-ring is at the base of the, the threaded section that screws into the filler port on the master cylinder. If you just use that alone you'll find that it doesn't work, it doesn't seal properly. Uh, and I'll explain why that is uh, a bit further on when we look at the actual scooter itself. So you need to add to that this other O-ring that I've got here on the outer diameter. And that O-ring comes in a little packet of extra O-rings that are included inside the kit. So it's good that they 
you know, put that in there because uh, this kit is really, you know, quite generic and it can be configured to go with just about any braking system. Uh, and in the case of the zoom brake, you do need to put this other O-ring onto the black fitting in order to get the correct seal. Uh, the bit of plastic tubing that came out of the packet here, so that, that's connected on one end to this fitting and on the other end it's connected to the fitting that goes into the, into the end of the syringe, so that's how that hooks up to the syringe. So that's all pretty straightforward. And this clamp is actually a clamp that you can use then to pinch off the, the tube uh, and why you would want to do that, well you'll see when we look at the bleed, but basically you need to stop the um, brake fluid from uh, running back out of the, when you disconnect the syringe from the, from the scooter, you don't want all of the mineral oil to run, keep running out and pouring out all over your floor, so this enables you to pinch that off uh, well, and then you can unscrew that, you've got your hands free, you can unscrew this from the scooter and you won't finish up with, uh, with fluid all over, the, all over the garage floor. So that's what that's for. And uh, basically you hook that up like so and then you've got everything that you need to do the job. So here is what the bleed setup looks like. We have removed the filler plug from the master cylinder and connected a temporary reservoir in the form of a syringe, partially filled with mineral oil. Then all we need to do is pump the brake lever and watch the air bubbles float up into the syringe. Once all the air is out, we can disconnect the syringe, replace the plug and voila, rock solid braking. Okay, first step is to charge the syringe with fresh oil. Make sure you use quality mineral oil like Shimano. Don't use any dot fluid or car brake fluid as that's unsuitable. You only need about 5 mils of oil in the syringe and the best way to do this is to start with the plunger at the 15 mil position. Then draw it back to the top but not out of the syringe. Then carefully connect it to the filler port and remove the plunger. Now you can start pumping the brake lever. Now the trick here is to, rather than slowly squeezing like you would normally apply a brake lever, you actually want to flick it because that vibration helps the air bubbles to drift up to the top of the reservoir and out through the filler port. Unfortunately there wasn't much air in my brake lines because I'd already purged them recently so I uh, am showing you another video here that I pulled off YouTube that demonstrates what it looks like when you've got the air coming out the way it should. Note how large some of the bubbles are. If there is a lot of air in your brake lines, it could take up to 20 minutes to completely purge, so patience is a virtue here. When I view the other YouTube videos, there are two common mistakes that I see. In this video, the person is trying to force fluid into the master cylinder or reservoir. This is not possible unless first you open the purge valve on the slave cylinder or brake caliper. If you do this, then you are basically doing a pressure bleed, which takes much longer and requires two people usually. The person in this video is alternatively plunging then drawing on the syringe. As you can see, this is effectively creating thousands of tiny bubbles in the brake oil. This effervescence is impossible to purge as each time you push the plunger, it is forced back into the reservoir. Once you're satisfied that all of the air has been removed from the system, you are ready then to remove the syringe. And firstly, you need to pinch off the plastic tubing, and that's what that clamp is for. And once you have done that, you can safely unscrew the syringe from the filler port, and no oil should run out over the floor. And then you can replace the filler plug, making sure to check that the metal washer is still in place and also the rubber o-ring seal on the plug. And once you've done that, squeeze on the brake lever a few times and check how much play there is. There should be no more than 15 mils of play. It should feel very firm. And if that's all good, then it's mission complete.